Hi, everybody. This is uh, Gad Saad. Two days ago, Imam Tawhidi reached out to me saying that uh, he'd be in Montreal and that if we might be able to meet. And then I remembered that uh, Mufassil Islam, who was a guest uh, on my show uh, a few weeks ago, had also reached out to me to say that he'd be in Montreal for uh, a few days uh, additionally. Uh, and so... Uh, very, very quickly, I had to try to set up a debate between the two gentlemen. Now, we had already discussed uh, a few weeks ago the possibility of holding a debate between Imam Tawhidi, who, as you know, well, based on his title, is an imam who is trying to reform Islam and who has gained quite a bit of uh, world prominence over the past uh, few years. And Mufassal Islam is a gentleman who used to be an Islamic preacher, uh, who then uh, left Islam and is now someone who is a vociferous critic of religion in general and Islam in particular. And so uh, we had an opportunity here, since both of them happened to be in Montreal at the same time, to hold a debate uh, right away uh, and well ahead of the timeline that we were supposed to uh, follow, which would have been probably sometime uh, next year. Uh, and so we decided to hold the debate today. Now, I was hoping that while, of course, they might uh, discuss some of the points that uh, they uh, both agree and disagree on, that we wouldn't sink too deeply into uh, all sorts of doctrinal weeds. Uh, you know, this one quotes this surah, and then, uh, you know, this one says that, no, no, this is what was meant here, no, this is what was meant there. Of course, there is a time and place for such conversations. I thought that uh, it would be much more fruitful if we uh, tackled some of uh, the differences and commonalities that the two gentlemen might have uh, on a higher level of analysis rather than, as I said, being stuck in the doctrinal weeds. Uh, but they assured me once we finished that uh, many viewers, especially Muslim viewers, might find uh, the doctrinal details to be interesting. Uh, I remain uh, agnostic about that possibility. I hope that you will find it uh, valuable. Uh, in some sense, uh, you could have replaced me with a lamppost and the conversation could have gone on because to the best of my ability, I tried to uh, redirect the conversation away from some of these very, very fine uh you know, details uh, regarding uh, a specific passage uh, in the Quran and so on and so forth. Uh, not sure that I always succeeded, but I think we do walk away with one important takeaway, which I pointed to at the end of the clip, and that is that the importance of freedom of speech is perfectly manifest manifested in that particular uh, debate. Uh, Imam Tawhidi is a practicing Muslim, is a uh, who, someone who takes his faith very seriously, and yet he feels compelled to critique aspects of his faith that he'd like to see reform. Uh, Mufassal Islam is someone who, at this point, is completely washed himself from, uh, if you like, the uh, the shackles of his uh, faith. Uh, he wouldn't be able to have uh, this conversation in uh, Bangladesh, certainly, and in many other parts of the world. And of course, I sat as the, uh, I'm not sure if I was a hapless moderator uh, in the middle. I am uh, the atheist Jew, and we we had a wonderful conversation. Of course, at some points, it became intense between the two gentlemen, but we all walked away feeling really good. Uh, we went for coffee afterwards. Uh, there was nothing but uh, warmth between all of the uh, participants. Uh, and this is the way that you have conversations, even though they may disagree on many aspects of Islam, uh, they're able to shake hands and uh, feel good about one another. And so if, if you take nothing else away from this conversation, other than the fact that we were able to have a very uh, difficult uh, conversation about issues that people view, feel very strongly about and walk away as friends, then that's an important lesson to take away. So without any further ado, uh, here is the earlier debate held between Imam Tawhidi and Mufassir Islam. Ciao. 
Hi, everybody. This is uh, Gat Saad, and uh, boy, what a man which we have. I am the, bolo the Jewish baloney across the two breads, an imam and an ex-Muslim. Here we have Imam Muhammad Tawhidi, and here we have Mufassil Islam, both of whom have been on the show. I should mention that uh, the, the good imam is now the first three-peat guest, whereas Mufassil has now entered the rare category of a twice-repeat guest. Uh, luckily, they were both in Montreal. We were supposed to have this conversation uh, probably, uh, you know, in a few months. But they both were here. And so impromptu, the last second, we decided to have a conversation together. Now, I should say that something that is much scarier than dangerous Islamists is to go and tell your wife on her birthday that you are going to not spend all time with her because you're going to host these two gentlemen. So my wife, who is now off camera, please forgive me and go easy on my soul. All right, guys, welcome. Thank you very much. For Thank you for us. having us. Great. Uh, so I thought, my pleasure, I, what I thought we would do first is, and I was telling you this offline, when I read some of your stuff, I get the feeling that there's a lot more that is common to both of you. You're both quite frontal and vociferous critics of many elements of Islam, many elements of Islamic societies. So, of course, we could talk about some of those commonalities, but what I'd like to perhaps spend time doing today is where is it that you depart from one another? Uh, you were an Islamic preacher, so you certainly know your Islam. You are an imam, you certainly know your Islam. Why is it that you, it led you to move away from Islam, whereas in your case, you could be critical of Islam and yet see a lot of value in it that you could remain within the faith? Either of you can take it. Well, um, if I may. Please. I'm a vehement critic of all religions. Right. I'm against any organized religion. I don't believe any scripture to be divinely revealed. And uh, that's the first part of it. And the second part of it, I thought that Islam was um, a divinely revealed religion from Allah Almighty. But um, in fact, eventually, I had to reassess my understanding of Islam, which I preached over 35 years. And that took me over to 80 countries all over the world. And I had to wake up to the facts that real Islam was something different. And I, to my reassessment, I found out Islam was no less um, a baseless religion like all other religions. And um, the problem of the present world has a lot to do not only with Islamic uh, politics, but also Islamic theology and jurisprudence and everything, the life of Muhammad himself. So uh, that's, in fact, paved the way for my apostasy. And in your case, how would you diverge from what he just said? Uh, my brother Mufassal does not believe in, uh, in any religion. Um, I'm not sure if you believe in God. Uh, I'm an agnostic man. Okay. Uh, I'm a believer in God. And uh, as a believer in God, it's very important for me to establish a connection with that God. And uh, therefore, religion uh, comes uh, between myself and God. Uh, Islam is not necessarily the only religion that establishes a connection between human beings and God. One can be a Christian, can be a Jewish, can be Muslim, Buddhist, uh, whatever uh, leads that person to uh, establishing their belief and faith. And uh, I'm a Muslim uh, because, number one, I was born a Muslim. Uh, secondly, I studied Islam, and I believe that a large uh, number of its foundations and principles do lead me towards God. And similar to every other religion, there will be certain aspects of that religion that we could do good without. Um, but it does not mean that uh, I no longer believe in God. I mean, belief in God is part of my life. It's how my brain functions. Uh, I cannot stop believing in God. No matter how, how many uh, lectures of uh, Hitchens that I watch or uh, Richard Dawkins, it's always going to be there within my existence as an individual that I believe in God. And when you believe in God, you need to seek a connection, a bond with that creator. And therefore, I'm a believer. Uh, I happen to be Muslim because I was born a Muslim initially, and I studied Islam. Uh, why I remain a Muslim uh, is a very uh, serious question. Uh, if I'm critical of certain elements of the faith, I'm not critical of my God. I am critical of the establishment within my religion. Uh, there are certain things that have been added onto the religion or uh, presented as though they are part of the religion when they are not a uh, when they're not part of the religion 
Uh, many people, uh, and sorry if I'm taking a bit longer here, but many people uh, see me as uh, someone who's on the fringe, someone who's very progressive, someone who's uh, uh, very modern, uh, a modern imam. And that's not true. I'm actually a very conservative Muslim. So with everything that you see uh, online, that's actually me being a very good Muslim. Uh, and I pray five times a day. I fast. I'm not fasting today because I'm traveling. And uh, you don't fast when you travel. I observe my uh, rituals. I'm very, very strict in my, in my beliefs. And I'm a practicing person. And maybe that's why uh, the extremists are threatened by me. Because I'm not an imam that goes around having a beer here and there. I'm actually someone who is practicing within the religion. Why I'm still a Muslim is because there are main figures within the religion, such as, for example, Imam Hussein, uh, who were reformists, who did present a, uh, a, a new reformed uh, version of Islam after the death of the Prophet Muhammad. And they were killed and massacred and butchered. And uh, no one with humanity in their hearts could disagree about the greatness of a man by the name of Hussein and what he stood for. And I'm, I'm a believer in that type of, of Islam. And obviously, we can discuss further about the types of Islam that are there. So do you think that there is anything other than the, the accident of you being born into a Muslim family that would have allowed you to choose Islam as your pathway to God, were it not that you were simply... In other words, if you were born in Tel Aviv, you would have been a Jew. If you were born in Rome, you would have been a Catholic. So... If, if, if it really amounts to it being nothing but an accident of where you're born, then what is unique about Islam that allows you to have a relationship with God? And then, of course, I can ask you the same thing. Um, I wouldn't uh, call it accident, because when you've established belief in God, then clearly there's a purpose uh, for you to be in a certain place, in a certain condition, in a certain family. I wouldn't say accident, because looking at my family, I mean, I come from a lineage that established Islam as a religion. So my ancestors fought alongside the Prophet Muhammad in his battles. We were uh, one of the first uh, people to establish the religion. Uh, I am a descendant of uh, certain prophets, uh, Prophet Hud, Prophet Noah. Uh, I'm a third generation Imam. And being a Muslim and now uh, bringing this uh, uh, notion of, of reform into the religion, I wouldn't look back and say, I, I came here as an accident. In, uh, in an accident, I think... Uh, what really happened was uh, there is a purpose for my existence and seeing the amount of uh, positive change we are doing, although very slow, uh, I still believe that I have a purpose in this life. So yes, maybe I would have been Jewish if I was born in Tel Aviv or maybe I would have been Christian if I was born in, in Rome. Uh, but the reality is uh, I'm not. In your case, you don't think that there is anything unique about any religion, let alone Islam, to make you a more moral person. If anything, you probably think the well, opposite. I, and I will pick on this on a few issues my brother has mentioned here. First of all, I do not believe anybody is born a Muslim or a Christian or a Jew. Nobody is born that way. And secondly, um, it's great my brother has come from a, a, a great uh, lineage Imam family and a lineage. I come from a Sufi family as well. My, my forefathers preached Islam in South Asia for 250 years. And I'm only the only son of my, of my father. And uh, I was supposed to preach Islam, which I did for many decades. But um, I, my question will be, what is the definition of God? Uh, what is your definition of God? Just be saying that I believe in God shouldn't be enough. Because the understanding of God is very much different in Christianity from what we understand in Islam. And to know uh, what God is and how to fulfill the purpose of my life, because according to Quran, the only purpose that Allah created mankind and the jinn were to worship him. So to know God from his Allah, from his book, and from the example set by the prophet Muhammad, my question would be then, then how do you worship that God uh, unless you really question him, unless you really... Uh, want to find out what he really wants me to do. So if you um, engage my analytical mind and I try to understand God, I have to question him. And if I question him, which Quran in fact forbids, uh, then um, I, I am not engaging my freedom of thought, my freedom of conscience. And if I engage my freedom of thought and my freedom of conscience and question 
the instructions which uh, were ordained in the Quran and exemplified in hadiths and, and the seerahs, I would say, sorry, that's not the God for me. So I engaged those analytical minds and I questioned uh, Allah. I questioned Allah through uh, the book that he supposedly uh, revealed. And I found out those uh, instructions are not in fact compatible uh, to the God of morality that I expect to worship. So my question again would be well, whether uh, there is a God, uh, then, then define God to me. What is your definition of God? And if your definition of God is the God of Quran, I'll say definitely not. If you're God of the Bible, uh, well, to some extent, no. But there are uh, many things which manifested in Jesus Christ, and I would, I would love them in many things Jesus said, but many things I do not agree with Jesus even. So um, just to say that I'm an agnostic man doesn't necessarily necessitate me to um, uh, believe in God, to uh, have the notion that there is a probably a God. So uh, I don't agree there. Got it. Uh, what would be the parts, and I, I follow you very intense, intense, intensely uh, on your social media, and of course you're critical of many elements, doctrines of Islam. What are the ones that, if you like, uh, jar you the most that you would like to see somehow reformed or reinterpreted or uh, altered in a way that is compatible with your view of your religion? Okay. Uh, you've asked me about the alteration that I'd like to yeah. see. The brother has uh, inquired about my belief in God and the definition of God. So can I answer him please, first? Uh, please, and I'll, anything you want. I'll head back to you. Sure. Um, the God I believe in is the same God that is referred to as Father in Christianity and uh, the one creator that many religions believe in. Uh, although many might present this God to be different, uh, only because the books are presenting that God in a very different way. The one argument the church has against Islam is that your Quran didn't bring anything new. And many people might have heard this in, in, the, uh, in the fields of debates that the Quran didn't bring anything new. What's in there? The majority of it is in the Torah, it's in the Bible. What makes it a significant religion? This, in fact, proves that we could, it would be safe to say that all religions are like trains heading towards one God. Um, whether we differ about Allah being the same as the Father in Christianity or not, we all know that if this world was created, it was created by one God uh, or gods, like many people might believe. But in reality is, Muslims are directed to believe in that one creator. Um, whether or not we differ in the characteristics, in the specifications of that creator, uh, does this creator have a uh, physical form? Uh, does he have needs? Does he make mistakes? Um, uh, what language does he speak to the people with? Is he eternal? Is he not eternal? Does he come down on earth? Does he not come down on earth? We may disagree on the characteristics and the descriptions and also the attitude of this God. But when we're speaking about God, this terminology in theology refers to the one creator that created all. And this is obviously with respect to other religions that believe in many gods. But I'm speaking from an Abrahamic perspective. So this is my definition of God, the one creator. Another argument would be, probably from a fossil side, is that is Allah the same as the Father in Christianity and so on. But I'm not speaking about that. I'm speaking about the one creator that I believe in as a Muslim and that all Muslims are supposed to believe in this God. We can disagree about the lower cases that I just referred to. That's my definition of God, the one uh, Which I do disagree with. Okay. Uh, <laughs> secondly... You'll answer it a second. Yes. Okay. Uh, secondly, is the... Uh, matter of uh, some, some things that you'd want changed in the religion. No, he said questioning this God. Um, Brother Mufassal said that in the Quran it states that you cannot question God. It's forbidden to question God. Uh, that's not true. That's not true. Uh, in fact, you can question God. And God Surah 21 verse 23 it says you cannot question Allah. Quote it for me. Well, um, I'm, I'm not a hafiz, but I'm telling you, the Surah 21, verse 23, you can check it right now. It says, you cannot question Allah. Allah will be the only one to question. Right. That verse refers to the Day of Judgment. When? Well, not really. Because uh, Prophet Muhammad, uh, in fact, was asked about this. And he said that people of the past, they questioned and they lost their iman. 
Right. So, so your iman, in fact, dwindles if you question. I mean, in a sense, what this debate deals with, what you just talked about now, is... In fact, I want to pick up on the issue my brother was okay. referring to. If I may just if com com complete, complete yeah, what please. I meant. Okay. Sure. Uh, now that you explained the questioning yes. uh, part, uh, brother, in Arabic, hmm. and allow me to, please. to speak with some authority here. Please. Uh, in Arabic, the word, the term questioning not, doesn't have many definitions but it changes when placed in certain contexts. So if God sent a message and he's referring to that message being questioned, that basically means that that message was rejected. Questioning here means doubt. So for example, I would come to the Prophet Muhammad and say, who said you're a prophet? Get out of here. That in itself is called questioning. Oh, well, that's not what we find from the Hadiths. Leave the Hadiths alone. You want to leave the Hadiths? He's, he's not into the okay, Hadiths. Okay. As a, as Me he, and you shake hands on the Hadith matter. The, but you do pray five times. I do, not but, because the but, Hadith tells uh, me. You, you, how would you pray, believing on Quran alone, that you can, the way you are prostrating, the way you are wearing the beard? Correct. How can you do that? The, the beard has nothing to do with the Quran. Oh, well, the, and uh, that's prayer. what I agree. So it has nothing to do with the Quran. So uh, how do you wear that and why do you wear that? The family of the Prophet. Oh, that's what I'm saying. So why do you know the family of the Prophet? You have to go for the seerah and the hadith. No, you don't. So where do you find it from? The uh, teachings of... Brother, allow me to, yeah, please. to elaborate. Please. The, the religion itself is made from theology, yes. doctrine, history, doings, yeah. and doings divide into three categories. Yes, yeah. So what the Prophet does is Cons considered was. authority. What he refrains from doing is considered the teaching that you refrain from doing. You mean Exactly. Yes. And then what he states. The compilations that we have today are made up of 90%, safe to say 90%, the sayings of Prophet Muhammad. The sayings of Prophet Muhammad. My problem with the hadith is that who said that the Prophet said these? A man by the name of Bukhari, or even come to the Shia scholars, who didn't see the Prophet. Bukhari was absolutely blind. He never spoke Arabic. He was a Persian man. Uh, never saw the Prophet. Didn't live with the Prophet. Came 200 years after the Prophet. All of a sudden, he's connected with an Islamic dynasty. And the Islamic dynasty promoted his version of Islam. He introduced the concept of jihad, made a massive army for the dynasty, and all of a sudden his books became sacred. To me, what's in his book means nothing. Even if it's the most sacred book after the Quran, it means nothing to me. But from a grand well, well, doctrinal well, perspective, Al-Azhar University yes. would not be in your position. Al Azhar is a nobody. They're nobody. I, I think, brother, we are uh, we are drifting away from. Yeah, the, we're getting into uh, details of doctrine. Let, let's actually. Pick it, let, let's pick it up. Yeah, but I'm just still intrigued to know. What the, the questioning. Basis, yes. The questioning. No, 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 no question. The basis of you. Right. Uh, have wearing a beard. You're speaking to a Shia Muslim. Yes. Shia I, Muslims. I understand, I understand have, your Shia yeah. concept. But but, but uh, my my question will be still. Uh, Check out the seerahs. You want to check right. out the seerahs? Right. Examples and lives of Muhammad. Right. You want to check out uh, the Quran? Sorry, not the no, Quran. only the, the Quran hadith. matters. Uh, hadith. Only the Quran matters. So if you want to base on the Quran, my question will be, what will be the basis of you, the way you pray five times? Sometimes, sometimes they do pray four times. Right. So, so to, how do you, how I want to summarize what, what this debate yes. is. You think that you only need to rely on the Quran, Quran yeah. and leave the other stuff, whereas <laughs> typically most, most Muslims would say there's the sirah, well, the biography of Muhammad, with that as well. the hadith, yes. right. which are the, the sayings. He's asking me, right. why mm. do you pray and have a beard? Uh, these are not uh, teachings that one takes from the Quran. These are traditions. Yes. Where do you get them from? You get them from passing on from generation to generation. Yeah. We Shia, we believe that the Imams are infallible, they're the, the lineage of the Prophet. If they see us doing something and they don't teach us and correct us, that means we're doing it right and therefore it continues because they're also should doing that it. Be, should that be basis of learning and progressing in Islam? That you follow your Imams, the Ayatollah? No, 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 no. we're not talking Ayatollah. You're talking about the Imams that are handed down understanding. Yeah, the successes of God. Right. Would you uh, also take the, the blames? You, would you also take the blames that were committed? Even your own city, you come from Qum, brother, am I right? Right. Even your own city, carried out by Safavids. Yes. 
against the Jewish people. The Sahrawis are not uh, Shia Muslim uh, Imams. Brother, many will disagree, but I'm saying there are many, but many there are many scholars. No, 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 no. Okay, I'm coming to that. Sahrawis are dynasties. Give you, okay, I will, they're not, I will they're not give from you, Mecca. I will give you. I will give you We're that. Getting We're getting caught in the weeds. We're getting caught in the weeds. I'll give it to you. Even if you say they were not Shias, but it's still. The Safavis are Shia. Yeah, yes, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> You're one saying, one's, one on. They're not saying, Shia Imams. I didn't say they're Shia Imams. I said they're Shia, the Safavis. Right. What the Shafavis carried out was horrendous right. up to the time, even now, yes. your present day Iran, yes. which has criminal procedure yes. codes. Yes where they're persecuting people who yes. are even disagreeing. We know the, uh, the singer, yes. Musa, um, who, who in fact was persecuted yes. for writing, singing a song. Yeah. So all these are coming from the clerics. We cannot just simply say, you wash your hands about it. I think you don't understand. I'm sorry, maybe I didn't make myself clear. Okay. The term Imam, that's... The Shias... Well, no, 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 the, no, no, no. Allow me to explain. Prophet Muhammad, his successor, and their success are called Imams. You mean they the are, 12, uh, yes, the yes, 12, 12 infallible I Imams. Understand that. We are community Imams. Yes. We're not Imams that take no, orders from God. No, I didn't say that. I am telling yeah. you the 12 When I say I learn mm. my traditions and my worship from Imams. What are they conducive so far? They are the, the 12 they been Imams. Conducive, brother? I, I, I feel like I'm Dave Rubin here where when he is between two two folks who are fighting and he keeps going, guys, 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 no, 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 no. guys, no, no, no. guys, guys. It's very important for the viewer because, to understand. But we're stuck in weeds. I want big picture stuff. Yes. Okay, there's a lot of, there's, there's, the there's, the there's a lot of, the there's a lot of stuff that is clearly for, you don't have to be an imam or a, a professor at Al-Azhar yeah. University where you read the stuff in, in any of the holy sources of the Quran. Of professor, the, that's that. I have to I emphasize on the issue that I want to talk about the understanding of God that uh, we have in Abrahamic religion. I would rather say it is a treachery in, in many ways to, I'm sorry to use the word, in many ways to say that Christian God, understanding of God and the Islamic understanding of God are the same because they claim to be Abrahamic. They're not, definitely not. Because there are many issues I can say. It's not only that you're on as creator. No, it's not creator. But we're not, not, we're not going to resolve the question of how to define God in this conversation. So what I'd like in, to know is in, in, how do you read the the rather harsh passages in these holy books and integrate them within your religion? Is it Perfect. that you think that they okay. are misinterpreted? Uh, is it that they're no, mistranslated? No, no, no. Is it that they're contextual? Give me the, the gymnastics, forgive the term, that you That's have okay. to go through, which by the way, I don't think is gymnastics because when I read some of your stuff, you seem to be just as, as harsh of a critic on some of the stuff as I would be or he would be. So how do you reconcile right. some of the ugly stuff? Okay. Firstly, I question. I question everything in the Quran. Uh, Brother Mufassal says that you can't question. And like I said, the term questioning differs in context. That's the Arabic language. You're, you're, you're an Arab uh, yourself. So you would know the, the context of the word uh, yes al, yetasa'al, to uh, question. To question. Your, your mother tongue is Arabic? Yes. Right. Yes. And therefore, uh, if you look at Surah Baqarah, the second chapter of the Quran, which is the biggest chapter of the Quran, God says, Inni fil ard I am placing an ambassador on earth, the angels who in theology uh, don't have free will. Angels don't have free will. Angels only obey God. And that's why we say she's an angel. He's an angel because everything is so good. They don't have free will. Angels do not have free will. What angels have is that they are obedient. But even when angels do not have free will, what they do is they turn around and they question God. And in the Quran, they said, God, are you really going to create a human being, Adam, whose children and lineage are going to spread corruption and shed blood on this earth? And God turned around and said, no, I know what you do not know. Don't interfere in what I wish to do. Now, this clearly shows you that one can have a dialogue with God. One can question God. The only time where in the Quran, uh, well, not the only time, but the, the many times that God says in the Holy Quran that you shouldn't question or that you can't question is that don't come to me on the day of judgment thinking I am not the witness and I'm not the judge. You cannot lie to me. I've already seen everything. That's the main concept 
when God says you cannot question me, unless you can quote a, a different Well, I, I, will, I will de definitely disagree there. First of all, no, I, I don't think that's an up to say. God never said to the angels, if, I, if my memory is serving me right, to do not interfere. It, he, he didn't use the term. Rather, no, I yes, never said that God I said think, not interfere. Uh, I think, you know, do not interfere. Higher yeah. level, guys, higher level. But anyway, that's not, that's anyway, that's not, uh, that's not yeah. let's move on. But when you are not offering the freedom of thought, freedom of uh, choosing, as you said, God has given us free will. But at the same time, he is, God is insulting. God is insulting people of other scriptures. God is insulting. You would certainly Catholics. agree with that, right? That, that the, the manner by which uh, Islamic uh, sources view the other is not terribly complimentary. Would you agree with that in general? As in how Islam... How Islam views the kafir? How Islam... You mean Islam as a religion or, or the Muslims? Islam, Islam, as Islam, as in the doctrines of Islam. How, no. What do they think of the Jews? And you the, can marry them and, and, and live with them and there's no problem. But oh, no. Th there will be disagreements. Disagreements the don't problem. mean hate. They're two different things. Religions disagree with each other. But the Quran also says, brother, that uh, marry a believer who is better, uh, better to believe, uh, marry a slave woman who is a believer. Rather Verse. Than, uh, Surat Nisa, I don't remember the exact verse, I'm not Zaki Naik. Uh, so, uh, Surat Zaki Surat Nisa. Zaki Naik, Tor Tor. So, Surat Zaki Naik, Tor We can Jewish. shake hands there. They may not get the reference. <laughs> we can shake hands. No, you want to explain who that is? Zaki Naik is it, some... Uh, I mean, if you want, I can spend some time and like, give it to you right now. Maybe when I'm responding, oh, right. you can do okay. that. And again, but, and again, in uh, Surah Bayina, if you know, that it says that the uh, believers are the best of creations and... Of course. Every religion believes oh, uh, that its believers are the best creations. Uh, well, I don't believe that anything in the Bible that says, when it comes to, to Jesus, saying that all the non... You are better than the non-believers. Matthew 10. Uh, what does it say? 31 to 40. Yeah, tell me. Allow me. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. Please, Forget please go the doctrines. I, I want to see. That's Matthew not what 10. I want. Yes. Guys, uh, guys, guys. Matthew guys. 1 <laughs> mm -hmm. clearly says that Jesus says, I have come with a, I have come with a sword. I haven't come to spread peace. Now, the word oh, sword was, here... You don't know the context. Of exactly. Let me finish. Okay, go the on. word sword here means to divide between the good and the bad. It does not mean violence. And that I have come to spread peace, which is beautiful. And then Jesus says, whoever uh, does not believe in me... Bring him to me? No, is not worthy of me. I, I can show that you is, the That doesn't mean that he's saying they're better. Rather, Jesus said, one who uses by the sword. No, no, not worthy doesn't mean they are worse. Because Jesus rather said, one who lives by the sword will die by the sword. And also, Jesus says, love thy enemy. So if my enemy even is a non-believer, I, I will equally love him. But on the other hand, Muslims believe that you will love or you will hate for the sake of Allah. So if you love and for the, for the to sake of Allah. To make it easy Allah, for you, I don't mean to interrupt you. Hmm. Are all the verses in the Quran dark, or do we have some beautiful verses as well? In the Quran? Yes. Because I can pull them out. We do have beautiful verses. So that's okay, but what, I, what I was hoping for you to answer, because I, I've seen you criticize. Uh, I'm going to get back to your, your What your are question? the dark parts that you're able to reconcile right. with your faith? The, you, or even the visual verse. So without, because I think if we get stuck in the surah this and surah that, it's very interesting maybe for us here, but the people who are watching don't give a damn about any of this stuff, They right? won't get oh, what, right? what's happening. So it's, it's, it's completely useless, useless right? Useless. So what's important is to kind of have a big picture thing. So you're obviously somebody who is a practicing Muslim, who's an imam, yet you are a very forceful critic of many aspects of whether it be Islamic doctrines, so, Islamic societies. Okay. So work, why, tell me why how you I, navigate okay. through that. I don't navigate. It's very clear. The violent verses in the Quran are part of the development of the religion. And it does not mean that they are absolute in their context. The brother, and nobody on earth can ever prove that a verse that says kill the non-believers, which referred to a specific army at that time because of the language, does not mean that you kill every non-believer that you come across. These are part of the development of every religion. And the main reason why religions uh, experience a reformation is for that very reason that you turn around and you say these violent verses no longer apply but I mean surely the Jains are less violent than the Muslims right, right. in other words there's been 1400 years of history never mind what's in the doctrines that suggest 
that a lot of very knowledgeable Muslims have done horrible things yes. to a lot of non-Muslims. And surely all of them were not misunderstanding and miscontextualizing their no, religion. No, they were religious people. Right. In fact, they were practicing religious people. But I am 100% sure that without even asking Brother Mufassal, he will tell me that a large portion, a large part of their faith depended on the hadiths, which I want scrapped out anyway. So if we get, from your perspective, so if how we get are you to contextualize the verses? For example, you said the development of religion. Right. You said every religion. In fact, it's not true. Not every religion, in fact, progressed through this violence. All Abrahamic religions no, no, they had violent history. Uh, no, yes, they did. But that's not the way, in fact, in many religions progress. It's not true at all. If you want to, in fact, refer to Hinduism, Hinduism is... It's not a divine religion, according well, to the Abrahamic structure no, of things. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just quoting you. You said every religion. If you say Abrahamic religion... About one billion people no, who are I apologize. Now. I apologize. <laughs> when we are speaking about religions, you began by saying divine also, religions. Abraham religion? We mean Abrahamic Abraham. religions. Okay. So, so what happens Abraham to religion? all those other poor Saps? They all go to heaven. Oh, after heaven. <laughs> is that is that what it says in the Quran? All look the people the who are not the non people of the yes, book. The con yes. the context are going to heaven. All the context. Well, I must have read a different one Quran. second. Okay. Hell in the Quran is described as a very tiny place. Heaven is described as a very but massive still, place. But still, Jahannam will say, give me more, I'm not fine. No, no, no. Jahannam, in reality, uh, hellfire, to, in reality, isn't a place that God places his creations in. Who said this? The Imams say God is going to burn people alive. The Imams say, so. yes, Osama bin Laden, Saddam, and Hitler have to go to hell. They walk there by themselves. A mother uh -uh. cannot boil her children alive. Why would God who loves us boil us? It's not going to work like that. Are you in a position to say who is going to go to heaven or who is going to go to hell? Everyone. To Islamic doctrine. I, everyone. I mean, are, you, are, you, are you fit to say it's, that? It's, it's like, look, it's a religion in itself, whether it be Christianity, Judaism, or Islam. If it disagrees with my mind, the problem is with the book, not with my brain. These are the foundations of a human to being living an honorable life. To understand the context of the Quran, as you said, it progressed. Progress, use the term developed, 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 developed. If you just want to say the developed, then you have to understand, I think you do, which is the timeline order of revelation of the Quran. If you want to rely on that, then you will see there is treachery as well. One cannot develop without it being complete. So clearly development happened after the compilation and completeness of the Quran. So the development, well, not really as well, because the Abu Bakr, who in fact initiated the first compilation, which you do not probably respect, Abu Bakr, but Abu Bakr, in fact, was the one who, you know, sent our, um, uh, Muslims to wars against the apostates. Okay. So that is part the of the wars. The Ridda wars, yes, that's part of the uh, part of the progression and development as well. No, it's so, not. It's well, part of his, the development of his caliphate, not the religion. Well, the religion wouldn't have survived if... No, it if, would survive. So if well, I, is, can I summarize your... I think I get your general position. All the nasty things that are in the Hadith... History. Who, who cares about them? What about the nasty things really, in the Quran? Well, hold on. Uh, all the stuff that we can point to top Islamic uh, figures throughout history are just men who are fallible, therefore they do wrong thing. But then if we turn to the Quran, which is your primary source, if I go through that with a fine-tooth comb... I won't find unbelievably nasty stuff that you does will. not belong in the modern liberal you world. You will. You will. How do I deal with those? I think uh, there's one thing that needs to be clarified. The Quran that isn't a manual for daily life. I think this really needs to be clarified. No way does it say that this Quran is a manual for daily life. So the wars, but Allah the battles, didn't anything the had in the Quran. That's what no, it says. No, let me finish. There is no, no such thing that that says that the Quran needs to be applied on a daily basis in the lives of every Muslim. There's history, there's stories, there's miracles, there's anger, there's laughter, there's jokes, there's swear words, there's, there's news, there's the Quran. You cannot put a title on what the Quran is. It's a compilation of many things. It's theology, it's jurisprudence. It's in and out. But Allah says in the Quran, He didn't leave out anything in there. Yes, He didn't. So exactly. if He did, then He has instructions, in fact, directly or indirectly. No, 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 brother, inspirations. Uh, let me see, finish, brother. God's finish. saying that the Quran encompasses everything. No, no, let me finish what I'm saying. It does not mean so do that. You, do yeah. you not consider Quran to be ultimate miracle? And if it is the ultimate miracle, if you do, 
if you do believe Quran is ultimate, ultimate miracle, and I think overwhelming majority of Muslims believe Quran is ultimate miracle, one of the attributes of the Quran is you get inspirations or you get directions or for everything in the Quran. And if that's the case, that Allah didn't leave out anything from the Quran, then Islam is a religion which is totalitarian. And if you, if you, oh, brother, you are flipping from no, one thing flipping. to another. No, I'm not. I'm not flipping. I'm t that's why. That's why a Muslim, uh, if I can complete, if a Muslim is never in doubt allegedly, about everyday day-to-day day -to -day affairs. You mm -hmm. said you didn't fast today because you were traveling. Yes. So if you're traveling and you didn't fast today, you, where did you get the instructions from? Right. When the Quran says you should fast, but there are exemptions from there yes. where you should not fast. So everything that your life is being led it's by actually, are it's actually, actually in, in the Quran that yes, you yes, are. Yes, exactly. So I'm saying there are exemptions there. So so when you are, whenever you're doing by this, your Quran is in fact dictating everything that you do. Who do you marry? It's, it's not dictating. It's not? it's not when you're saying you can marry the Jews. You just you just said you just said a few no, minutes one ago. One second ago. Oh, oh, uh, allow me, allow me to, to explain. Could a Muslim woman marry a Jewish guy? Of course, of yeah. course. Many, I thought it was the other direction. You can the either Muslim, way. The Muslim no, no, man no, no. can take it, any any woman who's not Muslim, but not the other you way see, around. I, I don't want to go deep because you're opening doors for me that I will need to go deep into, uh, <laughs> into explaining well, yes well, and when well, I do you I, I won't be satisfied say, until you go exactly. deep exactly but you keep opening well, doors that the, I need to answer the only reason I say that is because, because you'll, you'll lose you lose the viewers so that's all. You're okay. Even, okay. you have to be let's cut down to what you want to hear well, see so, that's not fair. He spoke okay, about everything okay, and okay, I can't yeah, answer. Yeah. Well, guys, 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 and, Dave Rubin. Guys, guys, guys. I, I, I think your brother is and, speaking and, more and, than and, I am speaking, to no, be honest. And can I, can I pray in, in, in Hebrew just to save myself? You want to pray? Baruch Atta Adonai Lehiru Melech Alam Asher Kid Deshano Bebi Zvotav Et Sivano Lehad Lik. You're killing me. Go. If I answer you now, they will not understand a word. You will understand a word. They will not understand a word because what you just said about God dictating and the Quran being... Uh, a book, a miracle. So what? So what if the Quran is a miracle? Let's say it wasn't a miracle. So what? It's a book that encompasses everything. You cannot prove to me as a Muslim that my Quran says that I have to follow every verse in everyday perspective. You have to accept. You have to accept. Uh, yes, I accept the it as a book of religion. history. Yeah, no, no, no. When you say accept, you also you also have the duty to implement the words of no, Allah. No, I don't. Where does you don't, it say? You, you don't have to implement. Where does the, it say that, that you have to implement the words of Allah? Where does it say? Well, it says in the Quran that Where? I'm coming to that. Coming to that, it says that when the Scripture has revealed, has been revealed, Surah five, verse thirty to thirty three. You read that, then you reject it. So when you, the verses, the Quran, the Scripture has been revealed, what do you mean? How do you reject? How do you reject? Surah five, verse thirty to thirty three. Getting caught in the weeds, getting caught in the weeds. You, you're not letting him speak, yeah. you're not letting me speak. Uh, and I was to discuss. Well, yes. This is Islam. We're yes. not talking about yeah. uh, Olympics. But, but, it's it's going to be but very But see, what hard. I find more interesting is the fact that... I don't that mind talking about you, Olympics. Because, no, yeah. because you're, you, in your case, you're an Islamic expert, and then after a while you decided to leave it. You're an Islamic expert, yet you remain in Islam. Yet you I want, criticize. I want it to change. Hang on, but you criticize Islam in a way that is as forceful as the way that he's doing it. So what I find interesting, from a psychological perspective, is to go back and ask the question yet again: How do you navigate through those cognitive inconsistencies? Yeah, yeah Surah five, verse thirty to thirty-three. Boom, here we go. So it's not in Arabic. Arabic. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming. Here we go. Um, no, there's English translation. Well, I'm, I'm, I don't no, have glasses, but I'll read it. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Um, but that doesn't yeah. make for good viewing yeah, to, yeah, to yeah, be reading on, this. <laughs> okay, because I know you quoted this once. Because of that, we decreed upon the children of Israel that whoever kills a soul, unless for a soul and for uh, for corruption, this has issue with your country's law issue um, in the land. It is as if he has slain the mankind entirely. And whoever serves one, it is for as if he had. Serve, uh, saved mankind, and our our messages had certainly come to them with clear proofs. So the messages, how do you how do you come get the messages? The messages are through the scriptures and the verses of the scriptures. So once they have come, and still you do not follow, you spread corruption in the lands. So if you say that Quran does not saying accept it and entirely, how do you understand the development of the religion? So if you, Sorry, brother. Can I finish? I didn't so, say anything. Okay. So, if you want to follow the development of the religions, you also have to understand the scriptures and accept it as they are. So, if Surah, for example, Surah nine, 
I'm, I'm just the uh, eye candy here. Right, I have to explain this, uh, what I'm trying to say. Go for Surah it. 9, which is Surah Tawbah, according to the time and revelation order, it should be 112, not 9. And to understand the development of the, of the Quran, you, if you mention this, then I have to mention Surah 8, verse 55. I have to mention Surah 19, verse 6 to 8. So to understand all that, I have to understand the entire Quran and accept them According to the Mansukh and other systems, which one is abrogated, which one is not, which one is revealed, which one is not, and which, sorry, which one I should accept and which one I should say, oh, well, this is not applicable anymore. So to say that Quran doesn't say that you should follow word for word, I don't agree with you there. So bottom line, you're saying that if I'm going to... Even if the surahs if, if verses are abrogated, even they... I have, have to, to follow allow, it. Allow me yeah. to respond. Go. Here we go. The verse you just quoted and read and gave me this entire explanation has nothing to do with the verse the philosophy behind its revelation the children of Israel you mean the Jewish people yes I know that context it has nothing to do with this not one word what you said has anything to do with the verse you referred to not one word. it has no it has not one word no no I'm sorry I don't agree with you show me which one. I just mentioned it to you when here I read it to you. Because you can't keep going away with everything had, without me responding. No, because, hang on. No, no, no. And our messages had... The children of Israel. Yes. No. Israel, yes. Has so, nothing to do with Islam. It has to do with Islam. This the, is revelation, the, the revelation the revelation was in the is context, work really well, the context guys. of the Jewish people who, in fact, rejected them. So it has nothing it has, to do it with has. the children it has. of Israel. No, no, can, no, can I draw you back? Yeah. Okay, let's try one more time. Allow me to say one word. Just one thing. And I was, sorry, brother. Uh, uh, 98, verse 6 to 8, and 855. You have to read from I'm the doomed. context of this, about these verses. May God have mercy on brother, my soul. Uh, uh, allow me, allow me to say May the non-existing God. God have uh, mercy on my soul. <laughs> allow me to, to explain. Yeah. Or to just add, add something. Look, I'm, I'm really sorry I'm going to have to say this. Brother Mufassil, I don't want to say that you have no idea what you are speaking about. I'm not saying that. Or at least but in, I am. In, this, in, in this context. But I'm saying the same thing. Allow me, or you can challenge me on this. Yes, I will. I don't know if the viewers will be interested. I'm, I'm here until uh, however long you want me yeah, to be. Okay. For you to, to get a clarification for yeah. myself. And the viewers have the right to, to yes. hear that. What you said so far has nothing to do with the development of Islam that we initially began speaking about. Has nothing to do with questioning God has nothing to do with God insisting that Islam needs to be uh, followed, has nothing to do with how Muslims hate other people, has nothing to do with what I criticize in Islam. You, what, the verses you are referring to are nothing but historical events that occurred, and God is saying in the beginning of this very chapter, remember when the children of Israel and we showed them our signs. We're not even talking Islam, we're talking Judaism in this verse. Brother, sorry. First of all, it has everything to do with the development of Islam. It has everything to do with the torture. That, Based on what uh, laws? Well, I didn't interrupt you when you said. So with the development of, of Islam, with the development of theocracy, with the development of uh, Islamic jurisprudence, it has everything to do with you, which has been exemplified throughout history, not only by Sunnis, but also by Shias. Uh, through um, uh, torture and through um, a killing of non-believers, the Jewish people, the apostates, history after history, up to, up, to, up to last year, when many of my fellow apostates got killed and we get thousands of death threats a day. And if you say this has nothing to do with the real Islam, it's wrong. I didn't say that. With the progress of Islam, development of Islam. I didn't say yeah, that. I'm saying this Quran, with the development of verses, has everything to do with it. For example, the verses I was referring to, Surah 98, verse 6 to 8, and also the, uh, the verse Surah uh, 8, verse 55, all those are taken into context, are taken together. And where I say non Muslims are the worst creatures, and then our, when we leave Islam, we are considered to be impure. Surah 9, verse 27, 28, 29. So if you are unclean, then, in history, even in your own country, Jewish people had to wear certain things to show they are Jewish people. And in history, your country, Jewish people were considered unclean. And in, in my understanding, whoever I am, whenever I leave Islam, from the context that you are saying, you will say there's nothing to do with, uh, with understanding or development of, of, of Islam. I would say it has everything to do with Islam, because eventually, through timeline revelation order and through 
putting all the surahs together, verses together, you can engage into mental gymnastics as much as you want. But I would say, from the examples on history, 99% of the examples show that non-Muslims were persecuted, apostates, are being killed, not even where. Do you are agree being that? Of course I agree. Uh, are so, being killed. Is, so these are, sorry, uh, those, brothers, uh, sorry. sorry. So if you say this has nothing to do. I didn't say nothing to no, do If. I in said, fact, I, I am one of the brother, main opposers I, I, of that phrase. Sir, so then how, I, so, I use the word if, if you remember. If you believe that's the way, then I would say, yes, this is coming from the Quran. And if he says there's nothing coming from the Quran, suddenly you got probably some sort of revelation. Uh, so, I don't know. Can, no, I, can, can <laughs> I summarize what's going on? So my feeling is, you both have very compelling reasons to criticize aspects of Islam. Yes. In his case, he can throw out all of it and say, this is all nonsense. In your case, you're able to cut and slice in such a way that you believe that there are elements that could be salvageable and other elements where you will Do agree you with condemn him. the ex-Muslims killed course, of course. around the world? Of course. Do you believe that I have the right to criticize Muhammad in the strongest of times? Of course. Right. But, but Islam doesn't allow that. Yes, it does. It does? It does. It does? It does. Practically and theologically. Right. Uh, really? practically, and practically and theologically. Right. How does it? How does it allow well, when when you are your Quran has verses which cannot be understood, brother, without going for hadith, sirah, and context. You want some water? <laughs> well, cool it down. Relax. Relax. Yes. yes. First, no, me, so you so your position is from a doctrinal perspective. Yes. You're allowed no, to, uh, allow to criticize. Allow me to speak. Uh, uh, allow me yeah, to go speak. on, please. Firstly, I think, uh, and also for the viewers. I think we, uh, we should have defined the meaning of Islam from your perspective and from my perspective. Mm -hmm. You and the viewers and Brother God have shaped the, the discussion today. When referring to Islam, you're referring to everything Islamic, this whole package of Islam. And you're tackling that. You're speaking to a Muslim reformer. When you say Islam to me, there are many chapters of Islam that I tackle in order to reform. Why do you have to reform? Allow me to finish. Yes, please go. <laughs> There's a theological perspective, right. a political perspective, economic perspective, social perspective. There are concepts within Islam, such as the one Muslim nation, that, that need to be addressed. Uh, there is a historical perspective, the traditional perspective. Every part of Islam or well, Islam is formed from these parts. One cannot come and say that Islam cannot be reformed without telling you which part of Islam cannot be reformed. Quran cannot be reformed. Allow me to finish. Can the Quran be reformed? Of course it can. Throughout chapters, verses. No, no, uh, no, brother. Why do we have? Look, we're going to open another chapter. Yes. I'm going to. I'm going to answer you quickly for the viewers' yes. sake, and then yeah. I'm going to go no. back. The, why do we have six thousand interpretations of the Quran? Because people view it differently, uh, basing on several sources of other, Islam, uh, other sources of Islam. Do you agree that people view things differently based on time? That's why we have different interpretations based on time. And, and it's in, in an effort to reform it. Yes. So if they have an interpretation, we can have an interpretation. So yes, it can be. You were tackling uh, the matter of apostates. You were tackling the matter of uh, Abu Bakr. These are nobodies. Leave them. So what? Let's focus on why I want to reform based on what Brother God is saying. What I say is that every problem in the Quran that the world has, what do you have? In, what, what's the problem? The killing, the beating of the wife, these matters are not absolute. They're not eternal verses. Nobody said they were eternal. The only ones that is said it the they were eternal. Is it the last revealed book? No. Isn't it that is, that is it's not last revealed book? It cannot be changed. Uh, no. Is it, is it uh, not the last revealed book? Allow me to, to the last the prophet. Allow me to finish. Okay. It is the last revealed book to the last prophet. Yes. Every problematic verse in the Quran is not an eternal verse. No one said, no one other than the Imams, which we want to tackle, other than Al-Azhar, which needs to be tackled, other than the Khomeini government, which needs to be brought So those behind. verses are not obsolete? They're not obsolete, no. They're not obsolete. No, so beating wife is not obsolete? No, they are limited to a time and place, and that's how they need to be so, seen. So the, if they're limited to a time and place, that verse in the Quran, you can just simply say that verse is not applicable today, yes. right? So if it's not applicable today, that verse is obsolete. The verse that is not applicable today is obsolete. Can we agree there? Let me give you a quick example. 
the Quran says by time, verily man is in loss, mm. right? Which basically means all men and women are in loss. Then the verse comes after it, except those who have faith. So verily man is in loss is not an eternal verse. It doesn't mean everybody's at loss because then the verse after it placed a limit, placed a border, a boundary around it. When we say the verses of beating the wife, the, uh, the killing of apostates, these aren't verses that say, go and butcher and kill Brother, and if you people say, every single day. Sorry to interrupt you there. Sorry. If, if, if the beating of the wife is revealed in this surah, then loving your, uh, your wife and in fact, uh, you know, they're your trusted uh, companions is there like your garments, you know, it's there. So I have to be a super intelligent man to correlate this verse to this and say, oh, you know what? Sorry, this is with a caveat. Not this really. This is a provision. Not really. The, uh, Not sorry. really. Do you know why, Habibi? Because, Habibi, because the Thank philosophy you. behind the, rev the revelation of two verses differ. And this is where we're going to come to my uh, type of reform. You are telling me that there's a contradiction yes. and you need super intelligence. Not, not, not only contradiction. I said, if you, if I accept your understanding that, yes. you know, there is also, like you said, uh, all people, humans are in loss. Yes. There's in Quran. But, but it's, it's, there is a proviso. But hang on, do accept those who are believers. No, 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 no. You are saying in one chapter says this, no, in the other chapter says I'm, that. I'm coming to that. What I'm saying. I'm saying in one the chapter wife, the context is clarified. Right. So if you are explaining the one chapter, for example, beating your wife, it is the last source, last resort that you beat your wife and then that's it. That's over. But before that, you have to call the opposite side, families of my wife, family of my my, father, my side, sit together. Then you warn. Then you, if it still doesn't work, then you admonish her, and then at last you separate your beds. Then you, uh, if in fact beat your wife lightly, like like Chuck and Dyke said, with a toothpick, you know, tooth, <laughs> and not on her and face, and a toothbrush, yes, not, not on, on her face, face. yeah, on, on all those. Why do we have to? First of all, have those verses for exactly. whatever context, just chuck them out. Because in this modern time and era, forget about chastising wife. Even if I, my wife is sitting right in the corner. If I, even if I say, you know what, honey, hell with you. She's going to say, oh, yeah, hell with you. So I will just say this verse is not applicable because I'm not in a position to admonish my wife or discipline my wife when, in fact, the question of beating my wife doesn't even arise. So having that in a book, you know, you have to throw it out because hundreds and millions of people so are, are, are get, sorry, hundreds of millions of Muslims, even if your understanding is that, are getting misled. If you say, I don't say misled, they're getting rightly guided when they beat their wives. They're so, not. no, they are. So, they're, 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 they're not. misled. No, they're, no, they're, they're misled. not. <laughs> they're, okay. they're, 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 they're not. not. Yeah. I think I've discussed this with both of you possibly, yeah. but m from my view, the only way that you could have a reform is a massive blanket statement in the following way. You have to find a new revealed revelation Ooh. that abrogates all of the violent passages. Ahmed has, got, Ahmed has got persecuted for that. Right, right, right. Ooh. So there is no other way to start doing each little letter and try to reinterpret it. What's your approach Brother to reform? God, um, and I believe many of the viewers would agree with this. We should have selected one topic. And discuss hey, we're dialogue, brother. It's not uh, uh, even with dialogue because now you have raised many questions. I need to answer. Go on. I'm, but, I'm, 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 let's, let's, not, let's, not, let's not get caught in the specific. Allow me to answer details. what he just said. Oh, go on. At least okay. I will answer I back if back. I can. Yes, uh, you said mm -hmm. that the uh, the verse of beating the wife is a matter that Muslims need to apply in order to be rightly guided. That's not true. Uh, do you know the philosophy behind the revelation of that verse? Why that verse was even revealed? Uh, can't remember. We're, we're getting caught in the weeds. Can't, can't, can't the, remember. Then I can't answer him. No, no, go on. For example, I can't Islam, in Islam, is there institutionalized misogyny, yes or no? Yes, there is. There is. But not to that verse. You, can, you should have referred but, to other okay, verses. Okay, okay. So you who, you, like you like the, but, the, but, I will, the I will bottom rather, line is, if I will live the life, if I live my life according to the dictums of Islam, it doesn't lead me to be to create equality between the two sexes, surely, right? So you, as a, you as, a, as a as a liberal modern man, notwithstanding the fact that you're an imam, how would you reconcile that? I don't care about the surah, this surah, that. Nobody cares. One out of a hundred people watching this care about those details. Big picture. There are many ugly elements to Islam, which you will criticize yourself, and yet you are a reformer imam. How do you reconcile that? 
all of the ugly things that you are speaking about were brought up by the brother which I need to answer. Okay. You ask me and I will answer. Don't ask me about uh, okay. how people are guided if you can question God because I'm going to have to answer you and in order to give you a right answer I'm going to have to refer back to uh, Weed stuff. So, well, well, so well, in each well, case, by, by no, so enlighten me, brother. Me answer brother, brother enlighten me. Enlighten so me on the circumstances the, of that sura. The general the feeling birth. I get is that your approach is there is a way to interpret yes, uh, that uh, verse uh, so that it doesn't seem so ugly. Uh, yes, I want to know the context of that sura. The beating of the, of the beating of wife. Okay. And I want to I want to see what you rely on. Okay. Go. On. Firstly, the Arabs in Mecca used to bury their woman alive. Hmm. We know that. So we agree. Yeah. Islam came. Pre -pre -Islam. Not all, not all, not all. No, not, not all, all. No. Even during I didn't the time say of all. No. I said Arabs used to bury Even their Even in wives. India, they, they, they uh, you know, terminate fetuses as well. Uh, Do we agree that Arabs used to be their women yes. alive? Yes, yes. Okay. In order for a religion to deal with this social problem, the one thing it needs to focus on is what? Keeping the woman alive first. We're not speaking to Oxford graduates in Arabia. We're speaking to the most ignorant people on earth. And, and I, I'm an Arab. These are my ancestors. I, I know. These people were the worst people to ever walk on earth. The Quran itself oh, shows no, us. No, no, no. Allow me to finish. Okay. All right. Go on, brother. The Quran itself describes these people as very low IQ. The pre-Islamic Arabs. The Arabs before and after Islam was established. So we're speaking before Muhammad went to Medina. The Quran says, O Muhammad, tell the believers who are Muslims to enter the house from the door. What does that tell you? If you need God to tell you that when you're going inside your house, go through the door. Does that not tell you that these people have a very low IQ? How, what were you doing? And receiving a message from God isn't something simple. The Quran says Muhammad used to shiver and shake and his blood pressure would go up whenever Gabriel would come down and give him a message. We're not speaking with highly intelligent people. Yes, they were intelligent people. We had astronomers, we had mathematicians and so on. But the people who buried their daughters alive thought that that would be a solution in order for them not to be humiliated when a war would happen. Islam came and they wanted to stop the killing of young girls. The solution for that would be, okay, come you Arab, come chief of an army. What's your problem? Why are you burying them alive? They said, well, not for many reasons. One of the reasons one poet wrote a poem about the woman being annoying. Up until a few hundred years ago, women were seen as tables and chairs in Europe. They're slaves, they're annoying. Islam says, leave, let them live. This isn't for every Muslim. This statement was stated for that very situation. Let them live. And let them have havocs on their heads. Let me finish. <laughs> let them live. If they were to annoy you, beat to them. We're not speaking to uh, Muslims of today. So you're basically contextualizing it historically. That's yes. the argument. Today, we don't have women being buried. So how come uh, today? To because people are going to cut this. Okay. We don't have people being buried today. So there's no reason to beat your wife or to find... You know why? Let me tell you something. Allow me. The solution for the, the Meccans at that time in itself was a problem. How come so Brother, many why Muslims are you saying, uh, no. today misinterpret it not in the way that you're thinking? Because they're following and different interpretations. No, no, no. It's, it's, not, it's not only that. I will just, just say my question coming back to the same issue. You are, you are always contextualizing this then, that time, and all whatever. But I'm just saying... Because there is then and well, 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 I'm saying... So all you need to do is say these verses are obsolete. We don't need them. Scrap them out. Scrap them out. Do no. it. Okay, fine. Help us. Oh, good. Then if I want to start doing that, I will end up with one page one. Right. Okay. Now again, so come, <laughs> coming to the other it's other. Not gonna happen, well, then. it's, it's going to happen. It's not realistic. But, but again, you said you wanted. They wanted to save these save women. The wishes that you uh, have. Wait, Islam wants to save women. Another thing you said that it's, uh, the, the. I didn't say I did, Islam wants to save women. You said you were trying to save women because they're burying them. No, I said that very situation in Mecca. Right. They were burying them alive. Uh -huh. Islam, even though the solution to it is a problem, but it's less of a problem. Okay, I would, say, I, I would rather say how it happened, how Islam saved women. Islam did save women. 
Muslims did save women. No, they did yeah, not. They did. They did. No, they did in not. In the wars, they kept the women alive no, and made them not. sex slaves. No, they did not. Well, they did not make them sex slaves. Uh, they did, but oh, the women went to be saved in wars. The women were turned into sex slaves. Men were not turned into sex slaves. Yes, they were. Well, some, some, some were taken off the penis and all that. We know that history. But that's very minor history. We agree on but, the treatment of women. Yes, but to, so, uh, well, when you have when your right hand possesses, that says enough that women were being slaved and they were having sex slaves they were having slaves if you don't if you don't if you mind the yeah, word i agree slaves. i agree but, but i'm just saying so islam in fact dot, did not uplift women they even turned islam's women into chairs and tables like you said until the recently in the europe women were like tables and tools right you just said that. Your islam wasn't in europe at that time but anyway but you just said in europe christians and non-believers if you want to say Abrahamic people, turn women into chairs and tables. I didn't say they Tools. turned them into tables and Treating chairs. Treating them? I said they treated them treated like them. tables. So, Can I interject? Uh, we are, no, sorry, one Please. second. Go ahead. So if that's the case, women were distributed, non-believing women after the war, were distributed by Muslims amongst themselves, like war booties. So if there is a surah even for war booties, so how can you, how can you even accept that Muslim, in fact Muslims or even Islam said women? They did not. Their main purpose was just to procreate and just to uh, you know, spread it to ethnic cleansing. Isn't war politics? Sorry? Isn't war politics? It's a dirty thing. Isn't it's religion thing. theology? Yes. Who carried out the wars? Muslims, okay. and according to the instructions of the Quran. Okay. And also, sorry, no, 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 coming no, no, back. No, 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 well, no, no, yes, 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 yes. Coming wars back. aren't conducted. Well, what, 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 the one second. I have to. Because I have then, to then you can't. No, if you're saying that wars were conducted on the instructions of the Quran. Yes. Then what? How would you answer me when the Quran was? The Surah 48. Let, when, me finish. When, when, let, let me finish. Go on. How would you answer me when there was only ten verses in the Quran, and there were wars going on? Oh, excellent question. Now the question is, when did Muhammad, in fact you said Muhammad during the, uh, you know, when, the, when he was treated. Don't answer me with a question. No, give me an question. answer. I'll give an answer. When the Quran only had 10 verses and the there were wars happening, how did they get their teachings from the Quran? I will come to that. To conduct these no, wars. Don't worry about that. I will come to that. So when the Muslims, in fact, were, were in Mecca, you said that Abrahamic religion and all the religions same because they were Brother, That's have, not what I said. I'll, I'll, come, I'll come to that. You can correct me if I'm wrong. That's okay. not a problem. So when Muhammad was uttering those verses, that the Jewish people and the Christian people, we already heard that because it's in our book. But those were the, matching their words because then Waraka bin Nawfal was still alive. The Christian. Yes, the Christian was still alive. Who was in the household of Muhammad? Right. And Khadiza. So, of course, there were matches, there were things like that. And also, later on, Muhammad came out with the, with the mirror. You know, the mirror so, are you referring that he was influenced by Christian Of course he was. Okay. Of course he so was. So, now you're, you're, you're throwing at me Christianity and No, Islam. no, I'm coming, I'm coming. Then, but he changed. So, when he Who went, changed? Muhammad changed. Changed Muhammad, what? His strategy changed. Th because, that's, that's not what, what people who believe in that say. Well, I will come to that when and how. Until he migrated to Medina, when he was in Mecca, his people did not persecute him in the sense of getting him killed. Okay, so can I just summarize this for our, the viewers because they may not know this? When when Muhammad was at Mecca, his his message was much more peaceful, but he didn't. Well, he wasn't able. So. He was well a lot more than in Medina, right? And so he he didn't get many adherents. How many? Maybe 150 or something. Islam wasn't even a religion in Mecca. Uh, but then when he went to Medina, it was a fate. It really. It wasn't even it a was faith. belief. It wasn't even a belief. What was it? We're not making much progress. You have 20, 30 people sitting in a house having an idea. It's like a club. Muhammad was having an idea. Yeah, it's... About it, through the no, relation. No, 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 look, look. Don't take my words too literally. If okay. we're sitting in Montreal and there are 30 people that believe, have an idea, climate change or whatever, do you consider that a faith? you consider that a religion? No, the start of the religion be began in Mecca. Its origins, yes, in... Islam is hardly a religion. It's a way, a way of life. That's what it came, right? Call it whatever you want to call it. Okay. It is a reality a that religion. exists within the lives of many people. And yes. yes. So uh, coming to that issue of how Muhammad, in fact, started attacking people. In fact, it started soon after Muhammad coming because Muhammad's intentions were questioned by many Jewish leaders soon after coming to Mecca, sorry, Medina. Do, so, you, Surah, do you agree that the Muhammad you are uh, mentioning now 
is the same Muhammad, the Ismailis and the Aga Khanis and the Sunnis and the Shia and all their sects believe in? He's the same one person? Same one person, but they view it differently. Okay, so it's not the same person? No, in that sense, no. Of, of course not. I would say they don't see okay, the, see so the when, same when person. So when you're saying Muhammad, yes. tell me which Muhammad and based on what book. So okay. I know how to answer you. Otherwise well, that's, I'm going that's coming back to the same issue. What is your definition of God? Because your definition of God... No, it's not the same oh, issue. It's the same. Not the same because issue. Not the same issue. It is. It's not the it same is. issue. It is. Because Theologically, Muhammad, it's not the same it is. issue. Because it's you not. cannot... You, you know it's not. I know it is. Because I know it is. Because the definition... Anyway, I'm I'm completely extra for here. <laughs> no, no, no. It's not. God, it no, no, no. first time ever that I'm completely you useless. You can't say it's the same thing. Surah, Logically, it's not a it Muhammad is, is a Muhammad human has, being. Muhammad has more control. Yeah. Muhammad has more control over his people than even a master has over his slave. No, it's Quran. not true. Surah 33, Surah 33, Surah 33 verse 6. Leave the Quran out of oh, it. Oh, you want to leave the Quran? Leave the Quran out of it. I'm lost now. Brother, reality says We are talking words. everything now, we are not throwing yes. Quran. Yes, Muhammad wanted paper and pen, they wouldn't give him paper and pen. Muhammad told him to stand, take your positions in the battle of Uhud. Did they listen to him? No, they used to disobey him. They called him crazy. Who said Muhammad had control over the Muslims? Muhammad couldn't even control his own people. Well, according to the Quran, Muhammad has more control, authority. Leave the Quran. You don't even oh. believe in it. Speak well, to me in reality. Well, you are, you, but what do you mean? What? So if you leave, leave the Quran now, we leave the Hadith, we leave the Sirah, we leave the Quran. What are we going to debate on now? Look, you are telling me. Okay, let's talk me, about look, uh, brother, soccer, soccer. Soccer. Let's talk about soccer. You are telling me Muhammad had control over his people. Brother, uh, the weather is beautiful today, Montreal. <laughs> Muhammad had no control over his people whatsoever. You cannot prove that to me. Yes, the time where they aligned with him was because of interests. The Battle of Tabuk, 30,000 soldiers, were they all Muslim? No, they were Arab chiefs who had political okay. interests. Okay, uh, I will give an example. And when the, you say and, something, and back it up. Huda, so I'm, 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 I'm backing up everything I'm saying. Hudaybiyah Treaty, right? When Muhammad wanted to sign the Hudaybiyah Treaty, many of the Muslims resented. They don't want to sign the Hudaybiyah Treaty. But eventually, Muhammad, you know, after telling them three times, they accepted Hudaybiyah Treaty. One incident, because he promised well, them incentives. Well, well, they, well. well I'm control. just giving example when That's they listen to him. That's not control. That's not control. That's, That's not control. That's not listening. They listen to them. Incentives. And then, do you, do you guys prayer, think, can, I, can I just interrupt you? Do you guys think that discussing such details advances They're the useless. conversation? They're okay. useless. Okay, bring down to the issue. Now, I, I leave it up to you. I, I, I feel like, and I, I'm sorry to say that this has been a missed opportunity because what, what ends up happening is we get caught in weeds that ultimately we can't get out of. Right. What's more interesting, and, and I'm not sure if I'll be able to save the sinking ship at this point, but what is much more interesting is to look at the areas where you both agree, okay. because there okay. are many, yes. and then there are many areas or a few areas where you both disagree, and understanding the psychological mechanisms where those disagreements come from. So I go back to my original question, which is, he rejects Islam completely, you reject many parts of Islam, and you use a process to reject together? those. How do you go about achieving that? I don't need to, I don't okay. give a damn about Surah 4.7. Who okay. cares? Okay. <laughs> Please don't come up with this point. To me, this and forgive that. me, oh. Imam, you are <laughs> quoting stuff. I do because I have to be convinced. The, no. The, you are quoting I'm, I'm surahs get, that... I'm, I'm not going to get into these. I'm just okay. going to answer you right, right now. Go on. Don't interrupt it me. It only took about an hour. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. The religion itself when it was revealed. It was revealed in order to guide people. All religions are like that. Religions emerge to guide people, not to rule over them. I see Islam as a religion that has become too dominant on the lives of human beings, and we need to start differentiating between the religion in itself as a message and the control of the religion upon people through religious clergymen. I want to separate, I want to create a complete divide, in which we are creating a complete divide, uh, between the clerical systems, the hierarchies, and the believers. Because the believers are like sheep, and I will say this and they can get upset. Muslims, when it comes to their religion, they are like sheep. And they know they are like sheep. How is it that we are sitting in Canada, right? A mufti in Mecca says jihad, the guy in Montreal blows himself up. What's this connection? Where does this come from? This one concept of the one nation needs to be destroyed. There is no such thing as a mufti in Mecca giving a fatwa against people in, uh, in America, and then the Muslim in America blows himself okay, up. So can I, can I interrupt you? So there? the clerical system is what I tackle. Then, Very in, in order to weaken the clerical system, we need to expose the filth within their books. But in your view, their books is the hadith. And the hadith, not publications, interpretations of Quran, whatever it needs, all means necessary. But not the Quran. 
interpretations of the Quran. Brother, the Quran. you cannot change the Quran. You cannot change it. Allow me, give me one more minute. Sure. You're a Jewish man. Yeah. You people never had a government to protect you. Did you have a government? Except now. 70 years ago. Yeah. For thousands and thousands of years, you were persecuted. You were massacred, killed. People chased you. Governments chased you. And you don't want people to convert to your religion either. You don't have stalls and tables, and you're not giving out free books in Judaism, calling people. In fact, it's very hard for someone to become Jewish. Exactly right. You still exist, and many Jews still exist. You can't eradicate a religion. You can't wipe it out. Try. Wipe it. Help me. So what you're basically saying... Well, if, I would if say I, that the worshiping of uh, uh, Aphrodite is not dead anymore. It's, it, it's surviving in the world for 6,000 years. So what you're saying basically is you're taking a pragmatic approach, which yes. is... Look, you're not going to get rid of Islam. Impossible, song. yes. People are still going to hunger to belong to that faith. Yes. Let me see if I can find a way to make it more palatable in a yes. modern world. And the only way to do that, removing the human authority. But then my question is, there, at, from my understanding of Islam, yeah, yeah, there, there is no clear doctrinal path to get to the Islam that you seem to preach, right? I mean, I follow many of the people that, 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 that write on your blogs, on your posts, and they all love what you preach. I love what you preach. But to me, it sounds like it's a form of unicorn Islam. It's an Islam that we would all wish to have, but doctrinally speaking, I don't see the support in your position. So tell us how okay. us and the billions of other people have all misunderstood Islam. No, I never said that. I never said they or have mis misunderstood. miscontextualized or what, whatever. Allow me to. Sure. I think what you're trying to say is clarify how your your type of Islam uh, will be applied to the people. And and when? And when? Yeah. Now, first question was what, and I explained to you what my vision right. was. Now you're saying how. How. And this is what the answer. And is. then maybe you could answer whether yes. his how is correct. Yeah. We're getting somewhere. Yeah, yeah getting somewhere. Uh, it only took two hours. Yeah, we're getting somewhere. You're offering us coffee after this, no? Yeah, sure, absolutely. On me. Uh, <laughs> the Jew offering the Muslim and the ex-Muslim. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to answer you. The matter of how, on a personal level, as an individual, is not fair. I've only been in the scene for when? I rebelled in 2014, 2015. I've been trying to gain an audience for three, four years. I need more time. Anyone would need more time. You want me to write a book? I'm in the process of writing my story. And all of my problems, an absolute expose of the corruption, my second book will be a solution. What you're telling me now, that Tawhidi, you want to reform Islam, I'm telling you Tawhidi is going to die and Islam will not be reformed. Mm. All of Every reformer you have today, we will leave this planet and Islam will never be reformed. I don't believe in a reformation of a global religion. I believe in the reformation of certain individuals, reformation of communities that rise up against the clerical systems. These are discussions that need to be had. I need more time. The world can't expect from me, okay, Tawhidi, uh, you came on the news in 2016, it's 2018. Give us your complete manifesto and manual as to how you're going to reform. It doesn't work like that. First, I need to build relations with diplomats, with governments, which is what, what's, what I'm doing right now. Secondly, I need to gain an audience. Third plan, I shouldn't be saying this, but you're cor cornering me too. Third plan is to gather a massive conference and make sure you know how many people you have. Then we will sign a global declaration, separate ourselves from these jihadis and these extremists and radicals. Then we will present a different interpretation of the Holy Quran, and so on and so forth. But haven't endless people tried to reform Islam in the past? That's the problem. I'm not trying to reform Islam. So, so you think Islam will, will not be touched, never. but you'll, you'll change the human reform. manifestation of yes. how it is practiced? Reformed what are individuals. Your what are your thoughts on that? And I am an example of a reformed individual as a Muslim. Right. And that is First successful. of all, thank you, uh, brother, for having me, uh, giving me the opportunity of talking to you here. First of all, um, it is probably extremely rare to find an imam like you to talk to openly, candidly. So that is by itself proof enough that um, how hope. far off we are from reformation, how far off we are. My brother here I believes that if an Islam will never be reformed, and I rather believe that too, Islam will never be able to be reformed. Islam cannot be reformed. And even if it's reformed, you can reform some individuals, their understanding and perspectives can be 
viewed and their views can be different, their visions can be different. It doesn't matter how I put forward my arguments, my historical analysis, analytical understanding, my references, but they will say, no, no, hang on, I see it differently. Okay. But with that pace of time, the world will not even exist by then, probably. No, no, no. no, no. So, brother, let me finish. No. I didn't interrupt what you said. So I believe that rather the best way and the quickest way to expect reformation of Islam or ought to have an impact so that you can say it is not dictating the way that we are seeing dictating us or interfering us, if you want to say that term, in our day-to-day -day peaceful life is to subdue Islam. How do you subdue Islam? You do subdue Islam by telling the unequivocal, explicit truth about it without being hypocrite about it, without engaging mental gymnastics about it. And then what will happen? Vast number of Muslims will become less Islamic. That's what I want. And if, if it comes to a position, situation where now you will see many Christians, they will say, you know what? Brother? Less Islamic means they leave the faith. Less religious. Less religious. For but, example, but they stay in the faith. Yeah. For example, they will, there, there are Christians now who will say, you know what? There are sins in the Bible, but I have a faith. The faith is Jesus. I, I love Jesus. And that's it. They, he, will, he will consider himself. So watered down Islam. Yes, watered down Islam. But, but the question will be, Christianity had to go through a lot of, you know what? through history, they have, uh, you know, the wars after wars, even Greek Catholics warring, you know, Protestants. I live in, in uh, Belfast, where the city is divided into, you know, with, with walls, Protestants on the other side, <laughs> Catholics on this side. You know, I have to go around my neighborhood to come to the other side. So I know all that. So if there is a chance in any way, like my brother here is saying, that there will come a situation where Islam will come to a situation where I say, you know what, I believe in Allah. You know, and that's I it. believe in Muhammad, I have a faith. I cannot go into nitty gritty details. And I'm like, oh, Quran, yeah, there are problems there. You know? If that's the case, I would say, okay, I'm okay with that. I, I would say, but I still, I will I still end up saying that, sorry, there's absurdity, and I don't appreciate you following absurd things, but it's your way. Okay, go ahead. If you believe there's somebody in knitting weeds in the, in, on the moon, up to you. But I would just simply say, I don't, I'm, in, I'm not in support of cherishing, nourishing fairy tales. Last thoughts? My thoughts is that the brother wants us to expose uh, the wrong within Islam. I'm doing that every, on a daily basis, on an hourly basis, in fact, on social media and uh, when I'm on television. Uh, but you also need to uh, understand that you are facing a greater force that's painting a lovely picture of the entire uh, system that you, you are up against. And how many reformers are there? We need to be very realistic. How many are handful, there? Handful. Ten? Yes. Handful, Ten? Yeah. And how old are we? How much longer do we want to live? Uh, we are up against the force here in this city and in the neighboring city and other cities. You have people who are working day and night and spending the millions and billions of dollars in order to spread the fundamental version of Islam, right? You, one individual, want to tell them don't spread your fairy tales, tales. That's not going to happen, brother. The only way for change is from the very inside. It'll take time. But if we pave the way for it, with the more freedom that the world is experiencing, with the corruption uh, in the Middle East that's vanishing, there is hope. Mohammed bin Salman is bringing reform on a very low level, political, but it's still a start. Raif Badawi, for example, has hope in a matter of reformation. Uh, Ayan Hirsi Ali, she left the religion, but she still believes there needs to be a reformation. Why? Because this is, it's, a, it's a realistic approach to solving the problem, a reformation. We are up against a force that has billions and billions and billions of dollars and has millions and millions and millions of advocates in, mil, in hundreds of languages. As individuals, we can't make a wall, hold hands as reformers and say, we're going to stop it. It's not going to work like that. We need to reform from within. And Can reforming I from yeah. within. Sure. Okay, reform and I, I wish within. the conversation would have stayed at that level. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But, but my understanding is, brother, listen, um, the issue, the demand, or the necessity to reform, as you say, uh, has come after people like me or people like us who started living Islam and started became very critical about it. Many of my friends died paying tribute to their, to their lives in Bangladesh just for writing blogs, you know, writing a sentence. They got killed by Islamists. 
And um, Christianity also went through a lot of nonsense and uh, barbarism where scientists like Bruno was burned to death. But it has drifted from there, and it has come to a situation where um, we, we see, we, if you say Christianity has reformed, in a way it has, uh, because there are, as I said, there are people who say, I just have a faith. Now, Islam, can it be reformed? Uh, is it necessary to be reformed? As my brother said, the understanding needs to be reformed, probably, if I'm not wrong. So how do you do that unless and, unle unless and until people like me are also given the chance and the opportunity to criticize it Unequivocal terms, and so I think that, agree so, with that us. so that this is this is one part of yeah. the uh, reformation process. The other part of the reformation is, is process is what Father is saying, and I will always say sorry. There's no need for it, and I will always say this is what is Islam. But he will always say, well, this is a way. I will say uh, there is a central message. Say you know, in Tripita, Gautam Buddha, Buddha said, Sarban uh, sorry. Let there be peace and everything. You know, there is a, there is a central message in the Bible, in the in the teachings of of Jesus. Central message: love the enemies. Central message is, but he loves every, everybody, even those who reject God. But what about what about Islam? I need we need to work on central message. If there's a central message, if God, if Allah is all merciful, all forgiving to everybody, then we'll come to that understanding. We'll, we'll see whether we can work with it. But to come to that, you also need to respect and find a way, first of all, to save people like me. Yeah, and that has to be done, first of all, to, if you want to question the mindset, you have to also speak out against our freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. And that is one part of the story. Second part of the story will come on after that. Can I uh, yeah, summarize? Uh, even though we got stuck in a lot of uh, weeds, I think what we can take away from all this is that you have an imam here who loves his faith, who practices his faith, yet criticizes it. You have an ex-Islamic preacher who now left the religion. You have an atheist Jew. All three of us can sit together at a table, have a conversation, sometimes get lost in a bit of too many doctrinal details, but that's what freedom of speech allows you to do, and that is to have three brothers in humanity. I don't give a damn about your faith sitting down, talking to one another, yeah. and that's where the future lies. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, thank you. A real pleasure. Right. Cheers. Right.